Hello. Anybody out there? Come on in. I switched it, huh? Hey, lady. Am I on the right page tonight? <laughs> Please check me. Come on in, everybody. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, good. That's good. All right, we'll give it a few seconds to see who all finds us tonight. Um, you know the drill. <laughs> if you don't mind and you feel so inclined, if you would share it, well, that would be wonderful. Um, so other people can find us on here. Awesome, awesome. I know, don't you? This yellow and black, just, I had to share this one. It just makes me happy. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, look, it's actually showing my comments tonight. This is exciting. Hi, Debbie Clark. Got my Debbies on here. And Lindsay always said, which one says, which one, Clark or Colby? <laughs> All right. I am so glad you are here. It's a quiet night over here on Battlefield Drive, which I really like, actually. So, because I've been Julie McCoy all day long. Cruise director. All right, so tonight I have a couple of projects I want to show you, and they are using the Amazing Life stamp set. I hope you like this one because I really do. This one is really versatile. Um, it, it really is versatile. It has birthday, so happy to have you in my life. I believe in you. Yay. It had our shamrock that we used from... Um... Oh, hi, Trudy. Okay, Doke. Thanks, Trudy, so much. Um, it has, you know, little flourishes, some backgrounds, and you guys know I love these little flourishes. They make me happy. Um, so we're going to use, uh, I'm going to show you two different images tonight that we're going to use, and uh, actually a couple more than that. So let's get started. I was telling, uh, I was telling Debbie that I really, I do, she said she likes yellow and black. I, I saw a card like this on Pinterest, and I couldn't figure out who the original artist was, but um, oh, hey, Deneen. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, but I'm going to go back and find it, and I'll put it in the comments. I give credit when I know who the person is. Honestly, I do. Um, hey, Wisconsin, welcome. Um, sometimes I get swaps in, and when they go up on the board, I don't have a label on the back of them, and I don't know who they are. So please know that if I post your card, it's not because I'm taking credit for it. It's because I really didn't know whose it was. So, um, all right. So we're going to start with this one. Like I said, we're going to use the Amazing Life stamp set. This one's in the Occasions catalog. Really, really good. And this is a photopolymer set. Okie doke. One of the ones I love because you can see through it. Yeah, Lisa, you're right. This one does look like spring. And tomorrow is the first day of spring. Woohoo! Even though it's going to get down into like the 20s tonight. So, all right. So, we're going to make this card and we're actually going to make it in a different color. Did you know that the Gingham Gala paper that is in the Occasions catalog has been on back order? You see this large and small gingham? This is all I have left. And it has been on back order, and word on the street is it's coming back this week. So if you haven't put in an order for it yet and you want to make sure you get it, order, because it will go quickly, um, and I don't know that they'll get it back in after that. So Gingham Gala, be there or be square. 
All right, so on this one we use the Daffodil Delight, and they're, um, the colors in it all just scream spring. I'm sorry, they just do. So we're going to use, this time we're going to use the Highland Heather, which also looks good with black, I think. Um, so on this one you're going to need a piece of Highland Heather for your card base. It's going to be five, oops, five and a half by eight and a half. Scored in the middle at four and a quarter for our card base. You will need a piece of Whisper White for the inside of your card that is four by five and a quarter. You will need a piece of basic flack for the outside of your card for the mat, and that will be four by five and a quarter. This is extra in case I mess up. <laughs> and then you'll need a piece of a gingham gala uh, coordinating with your cardstock that will be three and three quarters by five. Okie doke. All right, now the one thing I really, really loved about this is that it was really easy because you're stamping directly on the designer series paper. And I know there are a lot of designs out there now I'm seeing with that, and my eye is just drawn to them because it's so easy. You just pull out the DSP, find a great, great sentiment that will show up on there, and voila. So we're going to use our Stamparatus again this week. Or actually, again, yeah, this week, because we used it Sunday night, too. So always put something, uh, I usually use a stamp set under my plate, so when it opens up, I have something to uh, support my plate. Here's one of my magnets in here. I have the other one here. I just don't keep them on here together. Um, if you look on my grid paper, I don't know if you can see. See on here, I have these little dots here. Those are for my smaller layer. That's the three and three quarter by five inch layer. And these corners here, those are for my larger layer. That's just how I keep track of where I'm putting things when I do multiples of the same one. All right, a little tip for you there. So, got my grid paper, got my Highland Heather here. I'm going to put this on here where the um, dots are. You can see for my smaller layer. Let's put this one down here. We will put the other one. Alrighty. Now, the nice thing about these images that are um, like the, the the word so and the word life, the way that the font is really thick, it's really great to use your stamparatus for this in order to get a really crisp, clean um, image with it. So I'm going to use my Memento Black ink, and you want to make sure that you have a juicy um, ink pad when you do this because you want to make sure you're getting it really layered on there and this is as I said a photopolymer stamp so um, when you look at the ink on the stamp and I'm really giving it a little extra <laughs> when you look at the ink on here it you can it looks like there's a you can see light through there so you may still need to do it another time so I'm just going to turn that over and I'm just going to push down oops there we go Yeah, see how it's it's a little pilly in there? That's a word, right? Pilly. <laughs> My magnets are on there, so it should still hit in the same place. I'm going to ink it up again. Mostly those. So and life. Those are the big thick lines. All right, let's do it again. There we go. This is one of the best, best features about using this Stamparatus. If you don't have one, this is something, honestly, it is an amazing value for what you get. There we go. See how much better that looks? Much, much darker. Hey, Mike. Good, good to see you. Thanks for coming over. All right, so there we have it. There's our card front. Isn't that easy? All right, so we're going to take... Oh, actually, you know what? While we have this out, if you look on this card front here, you'll see I did this little banner in the Whisper White. So all I did was I stuck a little scrap of Whisper White. Let's see, here's one here. Stuck a little scrap of Whisper White there. Let's just put this here like so. Let's ink it up. All I'm really worried about is that banner there, so. Go. 
there's my banner. I'm going to cut that out later and I will set this aside. Alrighty. So we are going to go ahead and assemble, start assembling the card front. Here's my bone folder. These doggone papers, I should have used my other grid paper. These slide. So we're just going to first adhere this Kingdom Gala to the black. Okay, you guys are going to make me nuts. I'm going to use my regular grid paper. Even though it's not cute. <laughs> Sometimes cute doesn't matter, right? So I'm just going to adhere this on here. Hi, Michael. Welcome. Thanks for coming by. Now that I've done that, I'm going to take some white baker's twine, one of the best values. Thanks, Corinne. It really, it really, really is. This just pops, I tell you. So I'm going to do it a couple of times, bring it around. Oop. And just scooch it up a little bit. What do you guys see the second project? I think the second project is probably, I don't know. It just made me squeal when I made it, so... Hang around for the second one. You'll be happy you did. Now, as I was saying earlier, this uh, Gingham Gala paper is coming back in stock this week. So it will be shipping out. So just so you know, it's very, very popular. If you haven't ordered, order. All right. There's my little bow. Just cut these little guys off here. And we will adhere with some snail to the front. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and just cut out this quick little banner. Now, nobody's panicking about fussy cutting, right? Because fussy cutting is not that bad. You ought to just leave a little bit. Oops. As I said that and couldn't see it when I cut it. You want to just leave a little bit of white around it and then you won't freak yourself out as much. You don't need to worry about that L that goes up into that. It really won't matter once we get, um, get this on the card. Okay, well I'm not doing a stellar job because I can't see what I'm doing, but <laughs> hey, if the person who gets the card complains, what do we say? No more cards for you. No soup for you. All right. Let's just trim this out quick. Lindsay came in here earlier to see what I was doing. She said, I think you should make pink. Like, Sorry, there's no pink. Everything for Lynn should be pink. That's her opinion. All right. Now, once you have your banner, you're just going to grab some of the mini dimensionals. And we're going to pop this up on there. Give it a little dimension. There we go. There we go right here. Probably just three. Three little guys on here. Hey there. How are you? Good to see you. All right. <laughs> My finger's stuck. There we go. These guys stick, stick, stick. And you're just going to pop it over there where the other one was. And you can see here, see how the L, it just is right in there. All right. Now, on the yellow and black, I did some yellow flowers. Went ahead and stamped them and colored them in with my blends. So for this one, we needed some Highland Heather flowers. So I used my dark Highland Heather blend and the light and dark Commie Clover. So let's see, we will put a couple dimensionals on here. One in here. And I think these are just happy little flowers, honestly. I feel like Bob Ross. Happy little trees. All right. You guys ready for spring? Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> I can't imagine that you're not. I'm tired of being cold. This morning when I took Zach to work at 6 o'clock, it was 
20, I think 25. There we go. All right, so I put my little flowers on there. Those guys just popped. I went ahead and I took my um, pearls and colored them with some, or with my uh, basic black blend, which keeps the color right on there. Use these little guys right here. We're gonna pop them here in the middle, give a little dimension. There we go, like that. Come on. Anyone wanna play? Get over here. There we go. Whoop. All right, well you see what I mean. All right, there we go. So there's a card front. And you can see on the inside of this one, how I did the inside. Now, we're gonna go ahead and stamp our inside panel. And you'll see the You're So Amazing here. All I did was I took my block and mounted it. Get this out of here. With these, since I can see them, it is really, really easy to shape them. You could do it as a little wave. You could do it as a, a little um, art like this. There we go. Look good. Looks good to me. All right. I know. Isn't it pretty, Deb? Really, really is. All right. So I'm going to do yours so amazing. I'll ink that up. Put him here, or her, her. All right, and then when I was uh, cutting out my DSP, I always save the little scraps. Do you save your scraps? I love, 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 love this little, little strips. And this one snuck away. Here we go. All righty. And we'll trim another one. This one went MIA. So this is just going to be four by three and a quarter. Or, sorry, by a half. Three and a quarter. A half. There we go. All right. So we'll just take a little bit of snail. Pop it on there, put it here at the bottom. There we go. And I'll pull in my Highland Heather and my Clover blends. Now again, you guys remember these need to be stored flat. I know those of you who are old pros with this, you know that they need to be stored flat so that the Everything, the ink and everything stays well distributed. This is how I store mine. If you don't, haven't gotten these wood mount cases, um, they're the bomb.com to, to uh, store your blends in. So I have mine by just color families. So that's how I store mine. All right, well, let's just color this puppy in real quick. I always make myself crazy thinking I'm gonna color on camera. Ooh, talk amongst yourselves. I'm telling you the next project really makes me happy, so. Hang tight, just a minute. Do, 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 do. There we go. All right, a little bit of call me clover. Hey, Monica, come on in the house. My grand, grandpa used to say, or my pop used to say, come on in the house. Now my dad says it to me. All right, there we go. All right, and that's the inside of our card. So see guys, these really are quick and easy to make up, especially if you have it mounted on the Stamparatus. Just boom, boom, boom. And there you go. See that? All right, so we have a yellow Daffodil Delight and a Highland Heather, and you can see for the Daffodil Delight, I went ahead and just kept a scrap of that uh, Gingham Gala and did my 
a flap of my envelope and just stamped a little flower on it. I mean, who wouldn't love to get that in the mail, right? Love it. All right. Are you ready for the next one? I'm ready for the next one. So excited. All right. So the next project we are going to do is this stinking cute little pinwheel box. Isn't it cute? I just love it. Can you see it? All right, so this little pe this little um, piece, this little peanut was made using a six by six sheet of the gingham gala. Obviously, you can get four out of a twelve by twelve. So, in my book, that's really really fun. All right, so this just opens up like this. Oops, I put the wrong flap on. Oh well, I'll switch it. And then there's a little greeting on the inside. This is great because our, this is actually a pattern I found from um, my friend and fellow council member, um, the paper pixie, <laughs> Julie. She's amazing. Um, I know she said she had gotten him from someone too. So it's an, it's an older pattern, but it is really, really cool. So you could fold and put a check in here. Our little um, clear embellishment containers fit perfectly in here. Um, also, Julie did one with a Reese's cup, which I could totally get behind. So you can see, just they can um, tuck the little pieces in behind each other. Actually, let's do this way. Come on, man. This one goes first. Hey, Deb, how are you? Good to see you. All right. Sorry, my finger stuck. Okay. Now, let's start with our six by six sheet of Gala. Let's see. Let's do. Let's do blue this time. So you're going to take a six by six sheet and you're going to need your envelope punch board and you're going to need your simply scored tool. Envelope punch board and a simply scored tool. Little guy got covered up over here. I have to clean my desk off for you tonight. <laughs> All right, so on your envelope punch board, you will need two. Um, you're, you're going to need two measurements for your envelope punch board. You just need to remember them both for um, all four sides. So you're going to go to two and a quarter, right here. Two and a quarter, and you're going to punch. And then you're going to score down that little groove. You're going to go to three and a quarter. And punch and score. And you're going to do that on all four sides. So back to two and a quarter and a quarter. Oop. Two and a quarter. Hi, Linda. Thanks for, thanks. You're, where are you in Virginia? Are you around the corner? Oop. I gotta pay attention. I'm looking at the comments. Two and a quarter. One more time. And a quarter. All right, now that's all you're going to need the um, envelope punch board for. So to set that aside, but you will need your simply scored tool. There you go. Now you're going to take your um, six by six and just place it right in your simply scored so that it's square and you're going to start up here and you want to make sure oh I almost did it I'm going to use the large end of my um, simply scored tool for this because this is designer series paper and this you have to have a light touch with because you could go all the way through trust me ask me how I know I think I know I say that every video so you're going to go to um, five eighths of an inch and just come right down like that to where that intersects. You see that? We're going to turn it. Come right down. Like that. 
flip it, do it again, and do it again. There we go. Just like that. Make sense? Ooh, it's Spotsylvania. My hometown down there. I have lots of relatives down in Spotsylvania. All right, I hope you can see the score lines on here. So you see these little funky looking pieces here, this one and this one, these little long ones. We're gonna get rid of those. Oop, did I miss one? Oh no, there it is. See, I can barely see them. All right, we're gonna start here. We're gonna go all the way up and we're gonna stop at the second score line. You see that? Actually, is it in focus? There we go. All the way up like that. All right. And then I'm going to go here on this little short little piece here, right to that point like that. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cut this little funky looking piece out like that. And I'll cut this one off. Then I'll just take a little sliver off of each side of the square because this is going to be the tab that's going to fold in. And it's always better to have. Um, have a little bit of extra room there. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing over here. Sorry guys, I know it looks funky to you. I, I'm just trying to be able to see it. To there, right to there. I'll cut this tab off. And cut this tab off. And then we'll cut our little notches. Doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to make sure, this is another, ask me how I know, that when you're doing it, you're cutting into the um, tabs across from each other. Yeah, I've done that before. I've like cut the whole thing off. And I don't think I said very nice things when I did it either. There we go. Cut a little notch. Cut a little notch. One more time. Thanks for hanging in. Let's see. All right, two more notches. Thanks, Deb. All right. Okay, so you can see here I have the four tabs, just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, burnish the score lines. So I think on this one, yeah, I think I want the the little little gingham as the highlight there. So we'll do that one. I'm sorry, but these papers just yell spring to me. I am loving this game. Paper. Like I said, it is back in stock this week. Coming back. So, just so you know. All right, now you know for boxes, you always want to make sure that you're burnishing your, your creases or your score lines really well because you want your box to stay square when you do it not kind of be wonky all over the place. Alright, so the only thing we need to do now is we need to, I'm going to have this on the inside like this. Alright, let's use some snail for right now just for kicks and giggles. We're just going to bring that up to that score line. Squeeze it. Bring that one up. Squeeze it. Hi, Julie. Hi, Michelle. Look who's here. It's old home week. Oh, I should have put all my adhesive on first. Sorry. Gotta love me. Hey, at least I'm keeping it real, right? 
<laughs> All right, we'll do these two. You see, it really does help to do those little notches because it makes it a lot easier to not have paper left hanging over your edges when you put your box together. Oop, there's a score line I didn't really burnish very well. There we go. Like so. There's our box. Okay, go. Oops. Next, we're going to take our... This piece here is two and a half by two and a half, and this is going to fit inside... Oh, look, more Virginians. I love it. We're going to take this one that is two and a half by two and a half. This one is, let's see, two and three eighths by two and three eighths because we just wanted a little bit of a border on there. So I'm going to take my Memento ink again. I mounted the um, cake and the happy birthday on the same block, which I love to do because it makes life so much easier for lining up. Right, let's see if I can see. Hold your breath. Please, 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 please. Hi, Julie. Nope. Do it again. It looked good, but I smeared it. Let's do it again. There we go. Whew. Not bad. The pressure. Whew. All right. Oh, well. Um, let's see. We will use... Some daffodil delight, I think. Use our little candle. Use some little swirlies. Little swirlies. blue. Do a little bit of a candle. And then just add a little blue in here. Here. Did you know I used to be a cake decorator? I used to teach cake decorating lessons. I used to do wedding cakes. Hi Millie, thanks for coming. Yep, I used to do a lot of wedding cakes. Crazy. My weekends were nuts, though. And I loved it. I couldn't eat frosting for a very, very, very long time. In fact, I didn't even like to smell it. All right, so there's our happy birthday. Let's open this little puppy up. All right, see where the little tabs are in there? I'm going to put those on the sides, and then I will put this guy in here, push it down. And you know, if you put a check in here, nobody's going to notice the smudges anyway, right? <laughs> All right, so let's go. I can never remember if it's clockwise. I think it's clockwise. Clockwise? No, it's the counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. One, two. Actually, start here. One. One, two, three, and then bring this one in and tuck it in. Whoop. Like that. Ta da! <laughs> you learned something new about me? You didn't know that, Debbie? Oh my gosh. I worked. Well, I worked on my own for a while doing cakes and taught lessons at home and then taught at my cousin's bakery and I loved it but I was very happy to be done so all right now this isn't going to be this isn't going to get stuck down in there once you put stuff down in there so um anyway that's how you do the fold for the pinwheel now let's see if I have an extra oh I have a little extra yellow flower cute all right, so let's do a little tag. 
<laughs> Let's do another for you. We will get some mommy blue. Mommy blue. There we go. Thank you. And I will stamp this little guy on here. Perfecto. And then I'm going to take my little punch, my window punch, or label punch, sorry. And I'm going to bring it down. Can you guys see that? Bring it down here. And punch. And then I'm going to take it. And I'm going to slip it back in there. And grab here. See that? So I just stuck it back in there. Square it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep, that looks good. Punch. So now I have a little one. Cutie patootie. Hey, Lorraine. Good to see you. All right, on this other one, on this one, I used a little bit of this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous ribbon. Have you guys tried this? If you haven't tried this, it's beautiful. Debbie, what's this ribbon called? <laughs> Debbie's my assistant. Did you know that? Oops. Gotta pay attention. She is. She's amazing. So I took this little piece of ribbon. Then I took my paper snips and just cut up between these little fibers. And once you really get it started, see how it pulls. I love it because you can use these as little singles or you can actually um, do what I'm doing. There we go. See that? So just frayed it. Now I'm going to take a dimensional and I'm going to put my flower on here so I can center it up and know where I want to cut the rest of my ribbon. So let's see, that looks good right there. All right, like that. I'm so glad you guys are here. I needed to visit with you guys tonight. This is great. There we go, start pulling them apart. My clunky little fingers like that all right so that just gives you a little bit of texture a little bit of interest behind your flower like that now what I'm going to do is take a glue dot take a glue dot oh thank you so much Marty Do you guys do this with your glue dots? Put a ribbon on there, and you can see. I keep them like this for my classes now because they used to like be unwound, as you can see. This one had to be rewound. But I put a little piece of ribbon on there, so this just slides, and I can open it up and pick them up more easily. Like that. And it just slides on back. Cool, huh? All right, so let's see. I think I will put it like this. So I'm going to stick this down here behind my flower, like so. And then we will put a dimensional behind here. Because who doesn't love flax ribbon? Oh my gosh, Debbie Colby, you are my hero. I could not for the life of me think of the word flax. Flax ribbon. It's really cool, isn't it? There we go. So then I'm just going to take my little flower and I'm going to pop it on here like this. So I'm stick my finger in there and squeeze a little bit so it'll pop up. All right, there we go. So now you have it. Two different versions. And it is magical. All right, again, guys, so don't forget this stamp set is called down there bud. The stamp set is called Amazing Life because it truly is. There we go. Thanks Linda. 
Isn't that cool? It, it just really makes this ribbon just, you can use it for so many things. All right, so Amazing Life, Photopolymer. It's in the Occasions catalog. Be there, be square, don't miss it. Remember, Gingham Gala paper. You guys, you gotta get it while you can, because once it's gone, it's gone, and it's coming back this week, and then it'll be gone again. Mark my words. All right, so we have the yellow version, Daffodil Delight, and we have Highland Heather. Look at those beauties for the first day of spring. And if you wanna see another way that I used the stamp set, this one is one I actually did for a swap. And this one, I used the rec rectangles, the stitched rectangle framelits, easy for me to say. Um, or yeah, stitched rectangle, you know what I mean, this one. It comes with a ton of stitched rectangles in there. Now, look at this. Do you see how, hopefully you can see this, let me see. See how that's stitched around there and then this is popped up? By the way, this is that needlepoint nook, gorgeous designer series paper. All right, you see how that's stitched around there? This is what was cut out in here. Not this particular one, I cut a bunch of them. But see how this piece that pops out also is stitched? So you get double duty, guys, look at that. Oh, I love it, look at that. Possibilities are endless. All right, there you have it, my friends. Um, if you would like to get any of the things that we went over tonight, make sure you go to my um, online store. It's suitably stamped.stampinup.net and use the hostess code. I will post with this because I forgot to put it on here. I will post the hostess code on here um, as soon as I'm done. But use the hostess code and you'll get a free gift in the mail from me. And I would love to share these with you. So if you have any questions or comments, please, please leave them below. And I hope to see you again and for, let's see, create a date on Sunday. Meet me here at Sunday in the studio and we'll have some more fun, okay? All right, guys, thanks for coming by. Love you guys, and I will see you again soon. Bye.